Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the FTP command to copy files to and from a remote server. And in this particular case, we're going to be copying an entire static website up to my remote FTP server. Now, this will work on any type of operating system, including Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems, which have the FTP command installed. And that is, uh, this is a very, um, popular command it's widespread so uh, I'll show you how to check if it's installed in your system if that's something you want to learn to do let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here okay I'm on a Mac I'm going to be using uh, terminal to access and interact with the FTP command if you're on Windows you want to use command prompt and if you're on Linux um, you can just open terminal as well it's very similar to Mac so just to see if you have it installed you can type in FTP and that opens up your FTP command prompt here as you can tell by uh, the prefix here but we're gonna get out of this with quit we're gonna connect to a specific FTP server so for me I'm gonna be connecting to a FTP server at tonyflorida.me which is I have a, a hosting package with DreamHost it's a hosting company um, where I can put websites so that's what we're going to connect to so FTP dash dash passive and then the name of your FTP servers um, domain name and for me it's tonyflorida.me hit enter it's going to ask for the FTP user lemon aid for me it's going to be something different for you and then the password i'm going to go ahead and type that in for that user and now we are connected and authenticated um, on the remote ftp server and ju so just so you know um, i do have in the background here a, a gui interface where i'm connected like i said i'm on dreamhost um, I'm connected to the FTP server, and this is what we're going to be looking at here. And there's the domain name tonyflorida.me. And at this point, um, as you can tell, this is the, re the root of the website. If we go to tonyflorida.me, you'll see that there is not a website here. But like I said, there is um, the goal of this website is to upload an entire static website to this FTP server. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But for now, let's just go ahead and minimize this. And um, I want to start by explaining uh, kind of the fact that we're going to be working with two different file systems here. We have our local file system on, in my case, my MacBook and um, the remote file system on the remote FTP server. So there's two different ways that you kind of interact with um, commands. So if we want to look at the remote file system, like what's in there, we can do ls. And that'll show us uh, what's, here's the, the domain name directory, tonyflorida.me, what's on that remote file system. But if we want to do that locally, we have to do exclamation point ls. And that just is like the, the exclamation point there is the, um, the local trigger. So here you can see that this is what we're looking at in our local file system. Now, where are we on our local file system? Instead of using an exclamation point, you can also do l. PWD for uh, local print working directory and we are in users Tony Florida but if we wanted to go to our desktop we would want to do something similar but instead of CD we would have to do LCD for change directory into the desktop and now we can do either um, well we'll do an LS to see what's in here and we do see that website directory which is corresponding to this folder right here in the desktop so if we do LCD into website and then LS we can see all of the files and folders in there and just to confirm that's the case we'll open this and match them up so we have assets elements generic images and index assets elements generic images index so this is the website that we're gonna ultimately upload to our remote FTP server let's go ahead and navigate into the Tony Florida Dot me directory on the remote server so we don't have to prefix anything we can just do cd tony florida dot me and now we're in there and we can do an ls to see what's in there and if you remember from earlier if you caught it we just have those two fav icon fav icon dot gif and fav icon dot ico and that corresponds to uh, these two files here okay so we're we're in a good place um let's let's start out before we do any uploads let's start out with um downloading these two files just to show you kind of how the FTP commands work. So we'll minimize this again and um, let's just do one at a time here. So if we do mget favicon 
dot gif gif g i f um, this will start the process of transferring that file and it's going to prompt us do we want to actually download that file yes we do um, and it's here on our desk or in not on our desktop in the website directory we can see that file um, let's go ahead and delete that what if we wanted to how do we delete that move to trash right <laughs> um, what if we wanted to get both uh, files at once instead of doing mget favicon.gif and then mget favicon.ico we can just do mget favicon star which is like a wildcard character and it will uh, try to get both of these so let's do that um, it's going to ask us do we want that yes do we want the other one with ico yes uh, but that that's kind of annoying it works but it's prompting us every time for confirmation if we actually want to download that file so there's a um, we can toggle that uh, we can toggle the fact that it's prompting us with just typing prompt prompt and now interactive mode is off so if we try to do mget fave icon star at this point with the interactive mode off hit enter it's just going to go ahead and download those two files without prompting us for confirmation and you'll see that it actually go went ahead and did that so i'll delete those and at this point it's probably worth pointing out the fact that you can if you ever get lost if you ever forget any of these commands you can type um, question mark at your command prompt here and hit enter and it's going to show you all the different ftp commands that you can execute um, so so far we did uh, we did cd we did um, mget, where's mget? Alphabetical mget, here it is. And next, uh, let's move on into uploading files to the remote server, and we do that with mput. So we'll do that next. Now, I will say here at this point that it is not the easiest thing to take a directory structure with lots of files and folders and upload it to a remote FTP server. It ends up being a pretty manual process because FTP doesn't support recursive uploads, meaning um, it's just gonna upload files in a single directory. It's not gonna go into, uh, for example, the assets directory and the CSS directory and copy these files. It's not gonna go into the fonts directory and copy these files. We have to pretty much manually uh, create that directory structure and copy the individual files in each subfolder. So um, just so you know how to do that, I'm gonna walk you through that entire process here. And um, there, I, I will let you know that there are other options, like if you have access to SFTP, Secure FTP, or SCP, which is Secure Copy. I also have videos, which um, if I don't link them here, I'll link them at the end of the video or down in the description, um, just so you know that those alternatives exist. But if you are stuck with FTP, then you can definitely um, get it done with what we're going to show you here. So let's go ahead and j to prove that point, let me um, try to use the mput command to copy everything in my current directory, which if you remember is the root of the local website directory up to the remote server. So when we do that, hit enter, it's gonna go ahead and do that. And if we look at the, if we look at the output here, it says assets, remote assets, blah, 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 not a plain file. So it kind of skipped over the assets folder, which is a directory. It was able to copy elements.html. It says the transfer was complete. Um, same thing for generic.html, the transfer was complete, but the images directory, not a plain text file, skipped over that one. It did the index.html file, transfer is complete. Um, so if we now, uh, well, we can do an ls to see those HTML files, elements, generic, and index, but we don't see any folders. And just for completeness sake, we'll go on to the GUI side here, refresh it, and we should see those HTML files here, and we do. Um, like I was saying, we have to build that directory structure on the remote server. And in order to do that, we can use the make directory command if you're familiar with that. So um, mkdir is the command for make directory. So we want to make the images directory and the assets directory. So let's go ahead and do that. So make dir images, make dir assets. And if you remember, um, well, just so you know, inside of images, there's no subdirectories, just a couple of pictures. And then inside of assets, we have CSS, fonts, and JavaScript. So let's go um, CD into the assets directory. And then we'll make dir CSS, make dir fonts, and make dir 
JavaScript, JS. And just for completeness sake, there is no um, further subdirectories under here. So as far as our directory structure is concerned, uh, we have everything that we need. So let's go ahead and use the mput command and in each one of those subdirectories, copy up the relevant files. So um, in order to do that, let's go to the, in, let's start with the CSS directory. Um, so on the remote server, we're in the CSS directory, which at this point is empty. Um, but on the local server, we have to, on the local local computer, the local system, we have to go into the CSS directory. So in order to do that, let's do LCD for local CD assets and then um, CSS. Okay, so now we can do mput star. And actually, before we do that, let me show you uh, the local LS. So we're gonna copy these two files up. So um, what was I saying? mput star. So we're gonna copy these two files up to the remote directory. And it did that for us. Let's go up a level into the fonts directory on the remote server. And then let's go up a level to the fonts directory on the local server. And we can do the same exact thing. So mput star. It's gonna copy all of our fonts, and there's quite a few of them. And then finally, let's go up a level to the JavaScript directory remotely, and then locally, let's do the same type of thing. And uh, just so we know what we're copying, we're gonna copy these four files. So mput star to the remote direct or the remote server. And now we have all of those up there. Uh, there is that one other folder that we want to do, which is in images. So we have to pretty much go up two levels and then into the images directory. So CD up one level, up two levels, images, and then do that on the local server as well. LCD up a level, up another level into the images directory. And just so we know what we're working with, we have one, two, six, seven different images. So we'll do input star and copy those all up without prompting us because we turn prompting off. And at this point, we have copied our entire website directory, all the files up to the remote server. So let's go ahead and confirm that. Uh, we'll confirm that with the GUI here. So if we refresh this again, we should see those directories and we see them. Uh, let's take a peek in images and we see all of our images. And we'll just look at one of the assets. So we'll go into assets uh, and we'll look at fonts and see if, just to make sure that the fonts are in there. And they are. Okay, so at this point, if we don't have any caching issues, let's go ahead and refresh this page and see what we got. Um, and it works, so this is our website. We have, like I said, a static website. All of those images that we copied up, including the, uh, the, the resources, CSS resources, JavaScript resources, are here and it's serving our web page. Um, guys, like I talked about, there is, if you're stuck with FTP, this tutorial should be perfect for you, but if you're looking for an easier solu a solution that has recursive copying, so you don't have to go through all that directory structure stuff, um, check out this video right here. Um, otherwise, you have some other options, which I also have videos about as well. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.